Good morning. It's certainly good to be out with you guys this morning. Um, for those of you that were uh, praying that Brother Heath would return this Sunday morning, your prayers have been answered, and the answer was no. Um, unfortunately, you're stuck dealing with me this morning. Um, but it's very important where he's at, as Brother Jason prayed uh, for uh, Camp Noah. Camp Noah has uh, played a very important role in my life. Um, uh, I went to camp for a couple years when I was little, cried so much I didn't go back until I was 12. Um, and then after that, that's uh, uh, got many fond memories of Camp Noah. In fact, it's the first place that I ever uh, met my wife, Hannah. Um, and if you ask her about Brody at camp, she'll tell you, yeah, he was cute, but he's pretty young. So I uh, waited for him to get a little older, and then it worked out. Um, but it's, it's very uh, good of Heath to go there. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good thing that uh, Doug Roush and him and all the other men and women put on for the, uh, the children. Uh, this morning, um, we're going to talk about a, uh, a lesson that I put together. It's called Lessons from the Toy Box. Um, last week, Brother Jacob did a very fine job last Sunday morning uh, giving us a, a word study. Um, and in the beginning, uh, I don't know if he saw me crack up, but um, he went through uh, his uh, three uh, categories for what sermons fall under. And the reason I cracked up, because mine doesn't fall under any of that. Um, mine would probably be more considered a practical lesson. Um, I grew up at the Fredertown Church of Christ. Um, in the, uh, I'm 27. In 27 years, I had two preachers. Uh, the first one was Doug Roush, who was there until I was 10, and then uh, Brother Aaron Vion was there and is still there. Um, nothing against Doug. I don't remember a lot of his sermons just because I was kind of young. Uh, the majority of what I remember with him would be uh, anytime I was close to falling asleep, he would pound the pulpit and yell something, and it would wake me right up. Uh, but with Brother Vion, um, he, he's very good at putting together uh, what, what I would consider practical lessons or lessons that we can learn from our everyday life with stuff we've seen. Uh, I've heard lessons from anywhere ranging from lessons that uh, he learned from playing football, lessons from road signs, lessons that uh, he learned from salad, if you can believe that or not. Um, but uh, I think it is a very good uh, uh, style of putting together a lesson. In fact, the first lesson I ever preached was uh, titled Lessons I Learned from Growing Up in a Candy Store, um, where I, I shared some of my experiences working downstairs with my dad and getting fired at the age of 10, and all those fun, happy memories. Uh, but today, as we consider lessons from the toy box, what I'd like to do is I, I'd like to look at a couple of toys that uh, young, young boys and probably some young girls have had um, that we can all relate to and we can learn some lessons from. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about today, uh, the first lesson is to be on guard. And this is a lesson we learned from the Worthless Army. The Worthless Army Man, which we'll get to in a minute. So, as a child, at least as a young boy, I loved to play with my army. I also loved to play with my Lincoln Logs, but that's not how Lincoln had his name. We, I, I would get out my bag of Lincoln Logs, I'd build a fort, and then I'd set up my arms. We'd have some pretty epic battles between the uh, awesome green army men and the evil tan army men. Um, they would be strewn throughout my room. And oftentimes, they'd stay up for weeks. I'd have to watch where I, I stepped when I got up not to step on them. Uh, the ones with the guns pointed up, they really hurt on the foot. But as you can see in the picture behind me, there are several different types of army men. You have uh, one that has a bazooka. He's pretty useful. He did a lot of damage in a hurry. You have one that has a mortar launcher. You have one that uh, is calling an airstrike. You have sharpshooters. Uh, and the very bottom, all the way at the far end, you have my personal favorite. That guy's nuts. He has a gun, but he's uh, more interested in using his bayonet because he's crazy. Uh, all of these army men had a use, except for, in my opinion, one. The one that I did not think had a use was the one in the very top left. That's the minesweeper army. He didn't have a weapon. He wasn't there to destroy the enemy. He didn't do anything but just uh, sweep for mines. To a six-year-old little boy, his only usefulness was to stand as a human shield for the guy calling in the airstrike. But as an adult, I can look and I can appreciate more what that minesweeper army man was doing, what his job was. His job was to survey the battlefield, to find the hidden mines that were there to destroy the army. <coughs> so from him, I've learned to be on guard. 
because there's sins in our there's there's sin that lies in our lives like a like a minefield waiting to destroy us if we don't find it if we're not on guard. If you would turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. And that reads Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. If we're not on guard, our our enemy is always out there. He is always seeking to get us, and he is always waiting for us to stumble or to let our guard down. If we learn from the Minesweeper Army Man, his focus is not on uh, destroying the enemy, but rather watching out for what the enemy has laid before us and alerting others and to avoid them. Proverbs 4.23, that reads, Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the spring of life. So if, if we're on guard and we're guarding our hearts and we're not allowing the sins of this uh, life to enter our heart, we'll find that life is not only better, uh, it's, it's happier, but it's also uh, more fulfilling. And we'll also find our home in heaven one day with God. And finally with this point, Psalms 139, verses 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I had not, I, I've obviously probably read this passage before in my life, but I've never studied it uh, like I did when I was putting this together. And this passage is very encouraging to me. Oh, oh the thought to be able to, prayer, to pray such a prayer, to ask God to search out my heart and to show me what my weaknesses are and to help me with. That, that's what this, uh, the psalm of this prayer is talking about. And then to ask God to lead us in the way of everlasting and to a way to be more pleasing unto him. Now, when we, when we talk about sin being a landmine in our lives, there's obviously some pretty obvious ones that we think about. Uh, we think of kind of the big three categories. We got the uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But there's more things in our lives that can really ruin or destroy our lives than just that. Um, some of those are more deeply buried and harder to find. Um, some of those would be labeled anger, anxiety, or depression. Those are all very real things that a lot of people suffer from, and members of the church are not immune to that. And so, um, while maybe I don't suffer with some of those, I can tell you there's one of them that I've, I've, I've fought with. Um, and it's something that if I'm not on guard, it will uh, really bring me down, and uh, I won't tell you what it is, but I'll get a little hot in the head. Um, it, it's something that I have to be on the watch for. And it's something that we should all be on the watch for with uh, our brothers and sisters as well. Um, you know, the anxiety and depression. I have family members that, that suffer from that sort of thing. Um, we have loved ones in our family that have that. And it's a very real thing. If we're not on the watch, keeping in touch with those people, making sure to encourage them always, they can, they can also fall into that. And, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a sin on the surface for it to lead to sin. It can lead to, um, to stuff like uh, not attending church or to... Uh, to lose your faith or your uh, will to come altogether. And so that's where it's very important for us as a church to watch out for our brothers and sisters and be on guard for them as well. That, that minesweeper army man, he's not just protecting himself. He's not walking around with a minesweeper just to save his own skin. He's probably at the most risk of getting shot, honestly. But he is there to protect the rest of the army, and that's what his job is, and that's what we should be doing as Christians for each other. The second lesson I'd like to study is practice makes perfect. A lesson from a yo-yo. A yo-yo is a toy that we probably all had. Army men might be more specific to boys, but uh, a yo-yo is probably something we can all relate to. And a yo-yo, in my opinion, is one of the most uh, difficult toys to have a good time with. Because if you're not good at it, there's only so many times, I didn't bring a yo-yo, but there's only so many times you can throw it down, watch it stop, and then pick it up and rewind the string before it loses all fun, right? If you're not good at getting it to come back up or doing other tricks, a yo-yo is pretty pointless. There's only so many times you can do the walk the dog trick before it's uh, lost all fun altogether, which was admittedly still the only trick I can do with it. <coughs> but that yo-yo that I would, all, I would often find tossing to the back of the closet teaches me that practice is the only way to get better at anything. I never put in the time, the practice, or the effort to get better at a yo-yo. I don't know, maybe I'm just not destined to be good at a yo-yo and I'll never be good at it, but I'd like to think if I put the practice and the time into it, 
that I could get a lot better at my yo-yo. So my, my point was this, is the only way to get stronger in our faith is to practice our faith. Just like the yo-yo, I never practiced it, so I never got any better at it. If I'm not practicing my faith, I'm never going to get any better at it either. If you would, please turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. <clears throat> Philippians 4, verses 8 through 9. And while you're turning, I'll just say real quick, this, this lesson was either going to take 10 minutes or 40 minutes, and there was going to be no in-between on that. Um, so I'm really trying to drag this out to 10.05, but... Uh, Unfortunately, when I get up here, I start to talk a little faster than I normally do. Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 8. It reads, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So as we can see here, um, the command has been given to practice these things. Practice what is pure, what is lovely, what is commendable. To practice these things. If we're not practicing these things in our lives, then our faith is never going to grow, and we're not going to stick out. I mean, quite frankly, we should stick out like a sore thumb to the rest of the world because we're different. And if you will turn over with me to First Timothy chapter four, we're going to actually read verses seven through sixteen. Uh, in this passage, we're going to read the Apostle Paul's instructions to young Timothy and what to be practicing, and what the reward for practicing such things is. 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 7, that reads, Have nothing to do with irreverent, irreverent silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is, this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things, let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourselves in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You know, I, growing up, I've heard the term uh, that we are to be a walking Bible, and by no means do I have the whole Bible memorized or e even close to it. Um, but I, I think there's something we can all do, whether we've memorized the Bible or not, and that, that's to, to actually live out our faith. It's, it's all too easy to sit here in the pew, nod our head, agree with the preacher, and then walk out the door and just go back to living our lives just like everybody else does. If we're to actually uh, be practicing our faith, we, like, like I said earlier, we should stick out like a single thumb. That's not very hard to do in the world around us. Um, you know, just as an example of uh, my experience in the world, my, my entire working career, I have worked with auto mechanics and union factory workers. You want to talk about kind of a rougher group, that's it. It doesn't take a whole lot to stick out from them. But I'll admit, there's been times in my life where I found myself fitting in with them more than I've stood out. And that, that, that's an example of me not practicing my faith. Um, there's been times where... Um, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, there's been times I've struggled with language. Um, it's one of those things you hear all around you, and that's no excuse. It's, it's still wrong to do. When I'm, when I'm doing better at practicing my faith, those are the ty type of things that, you know, you don't say. And, you know, I've noticed when I've done better about that, people notice that. They, they make comments about it, and, you know, and they'll start to apologize for their language when, they're, when you're around. You know, I know when I'm doing good when I, I hear those apologies. I know when I'm not doing good. Um, so if we're not practicing our faith, um, we're not going to stick out to this world. And with that, be careful of the things that we practice. We want to make sure we're practicing the right things. Because just like we can practice the right things, we can also practice the wrong things, and then they become even easier to do. Um, a pathological liar started someone who started practicing. Alcoholics started practicing. Some of your struggles with language started practicing. Um, those are all things to avoid and not practice. And the final point that I have this morning is following directions is the only way to get home. 
And that's a lesson that we can learn from our leaders. For those of you that don't know, I am a big fan of Legos. I have a couple sets that Hannah would uh, probably prefer I don't have. Um, not because they're huge, but because they cost money. Um, for example, I have the, uh, the, the very big version of the Millennium Falcon. I'm a big Star Wars fan as well. Um, I have one that's the Roman Coliseum. That one's pretty cool. Um, there's one that's like a four foot tall roller coaster and it actually works. That, that one's pretty cool as well. Um, but what I, what I can tell you with those Legos is I'm not talented enough to put those together without the directions. If I tried to put together, for example, the Coliseum without the directions, it would look like a destroyed Coliseum by the time I got done with it. And for anybody that's ever built Legos, you know if you miss a step or you accidentally flip a page and you missed a page, you know eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to go back and you're going to have to take apart everything you did because it doesn't fit together right. And just like the Legos, and if we miss a step in it, it's the same way with our directions on getting home to heaven. If we miss steps or we skip steps or there's things that we don't follow that God commands, we're not going to get home. If you would, turn over with me to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So this passage tells us that God's word is complete and ready to show us the way. All we have to do is follow it. Uh, I know that probably sounds too good to be true or too easy, right? But that's literally all we have to do. We have to follow God's word. He has laid out every step that we should take. Um, you know, we know the, the ones to become a, Christ, a Christian. Hear, uh, believe, repent, be, uh, confess, and be, be baptized, right? And then there's also remain faithful. Uh, I've, I've talked about remaining faithful before. It's the hardest step because, you know, the, the first five might take you, you might start at point A and you might end up at uh, the fifth one in, you know, a couple of weeks, a year, months, you never know. But the sixth one goes on for the rest of his life. And that's where we have to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and follow his directions to get home. If you would turn over with me to Psalms 119, verses 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. That reads, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If we follow God's word, he's lighting our path and he's guiding our feet. And then finally, in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3, verse, or, sorry. Yeah, verse, uh, uh, I didn't that 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil. And we have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. So, as I said, this lesson will either take 10 minutes or 20. It looks like I got 15 out of it, but uh, that, that's, I'll take it. Uh, we might just have a little bit of extra time before we get to class here this morning. But uh, just, to, to, just to sum up, so some lessons that we can all learn from our toys. Uh, we learned from the worthless army man to be on guard. Be on guard against the uh, devil because he's seeking to devour us. We've learned that practice makes perfect. If we're not practicing our faith, we'll never get any better at it. And finally, we learned following directions is the only way to get home. Um, if you will, please bow with me. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this Lord's Day that you blessed us with. We thank you for this opportunity to gather and to study a portion of your word, Father. We pray that as we consider these things, that you will uh, uh, search out our hearts and to show us our weaknesses, that the, you might help us to stand on guard against the, uh, the devil, that you will um, help us to uh, be better at practicing our faith each and every day. Uh, we pray that you will also uh, help to guide our, our feet and uh, guide our path, that we might uh, find our home with you one day in heaven. Father, we thank you so much for your word and the gospel and uh, the simplicity of it. Um, Father, we... Uh, we know we are not a worthy people. Uh, we have all sinned and fallen short, but you loved us so much that you sent your son and you were willing to guide us back to you. Father, we thank you so much for that and we pray that we will never forget that and always strive to be found pleasing unto you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. We'll now be dismissed to our classes.